So when discussing abnormalities with the immune system, we typically talk about hypersensitivities. That refers to the immune system being overly sensitive to molecules that it should not be recognizing and mounting an immune response against. And we break down hypersensitivities either into allergies or allergic reactions. The immune system is sensitive to a molecule in the environment that's not really a pathogen, but it reacts against it, against it. or autoimmune reactions. These are hypersensitivities the immune system is recognizing a self molecule and reacting against, against it. Uh, autoimmune disorders affect 5 to 10 percent of the population and this reflects a, uh, an aspect of the immune system that is not perfect. Right? So when we think about uh, B cells and T cells, which are the primary cells responsible for both hypersensitivity types, uh, B cells uh, in the bone marrow undergo B cell development, somatic recombination, VDJ recombination in their heavy and light chain genes, and generate B cell receptors with antigen binding sites. T cells undergoing T cell development in the thymus, uh, also undergoing gene rearrangement in their TCR alpha and beta genes, are generating T cell receptors with an antigen binding site. And we know that in the central lymphoid organs, that these cells undergo a process called negative selection. If they, with their antigen binding sites, interact with any self molecules that they inter uh, that they might bind, um, they should undergo either gene re uh, either receptor editing to change their antigen binding site, or they should undergo apoptosis. Um, so these would be self reactive B cells or T cells. The process is not perfect. Cells cannot be shown every single human antigen in the bone marrow or in the thymus. So um, self-reactive B cells do occasionally escape from the bone marrow. Self-reactive T cells do occasionally escape from the thymus. So cells can escape negative selection even if they're self-reactive because they haven't been screened against that the, the, the auto uh, antigen that they might recognize. So we talk about cells gaining central tolerance if they don't interact with self molecules in the central lymphoid organs, which is true, but you can still have self-reactive cells leave because they maybe didn't, weren't shown the uh, protein or other molecule that they interact with, um, that they, they would bind strongly with their antigen binding site. So they leave the uh, central lymphoid organ, either the bone marrow or the thymus, they enter the circulatory system, uh, make it to a lymph node where they become activated uh, in terms of going from immature to mature, naive um, T cells or B cells. And we know along this journey, they gain something called peripheral tolerance. Again, if they interact with self molecules somewhere along this journey, B cells should undergo uh, energy, which means they become, uh, they be, they, they're rendered um, inactive. They're not allowed to activate or they undergo apoptosis again. So, uh, but again, cells that are self-reactive might not encounter their uh, antigen in this journey as well. So you still might have cells that are self-reactive making it out of the central lymphoid organ and gaining both central tolerance and peripheral tolerance. And now these cells are going to circulate through the body and maybe they find their way uh, and interact with their antigen sometime later. Uh, this is going to be separate from Treg cells, which we know actually do uh, bind self peptides, uh, and their job is to suppress the immune response. But we're going to focus here on autoreactive B cells and autoreactive T cells that have escaped um, negative selection. So there are different types of hypersensitivity reactions we've talked about, either uh, when talking about allergic reactions or autoimmune reactions. Type 2 reactions refer to antibodies binding some molecule on the surface of a cell or in the extracellular matrix. When we're talking about autoimmune disorders, we're going to refer to these antibodies as autoantibodies. They bind R molecules, and we're going to refer to the molecules they bind, the self molecules, as autoantigens. So they're not from a pathogen, they are from the person. And so Type 2 reactions we'll see occur um, on the surface of red blood cells or platelets or occur in a number of um, uh, endocrine 
glands such as thyroid, pancreas, kidney. And when these autoantigens bind molecules, they could trigger a number of different immune responses, which we'll cover in later videos. Type 3 reactions um, occur when antibodies bind soluble molecules. So these are molecules found in your blood, in your humors, in your lymph, in your inter interstitial fluid. So in this case, we're talking about autoantibodies binding soluble autoantigens. And this will affect uh, the joints in terms of arthritis and might be systemic in the capus of lupus. And we'll cover those in future videos. Type 4 reactions um, primarily involve uh, T cells either inducing inflammation uh, in terms of CD4 or inducing cell killing via CD8. And we'll see these uh, when we talk about things like type 1 diabetes in the pancreas or um, uh, with muscular dystrophy, uh, damaging the nerves. So uh, CD4 obviously is going to be involved in all types for uh, us to make uh, antibodies, usually isotype switch antibodies like IgG that are used uh, in type 2 and type 3 reactions. Obviously, you're going to use CD4 cells for those. But in type, so CD4 is technically involved in all types of autoimmune reactions or hypersensitivity reactions. But for type 4 reactions, it's primarily just involving or primarily involving inflammation or cell killing via the activation of T cells. So not um, necessarily uh, primarily induced by autoantibodies. So this is an introduction to uh, autoimmune disorders, um, and we're going to go into the different types in future videos.